today's episode, it's all about Entra ID, and I've got a bag full of tips and tricks for you. We're going to look at settings that you probably think, what on earth does that do? Well, all will be revealed, so stay tuned. everyone, a warm welcome back. How are you? First of all, a very happy new year to you. Welcome to the first video of 2025. And today we're talking uh, all things Entra ID or Azure Active Directory, whatever you want to call it nowadays. Uh, and we're looking at that big bag of tips and tricks and those, we're going to look at those settings and you think, what does that do and how does that work? Uh, so I've kind of pulled together a whole bunch of tips and tricks that I'm sure sure you're going to find useful. So make sure you stick around and stick to the end because there's some really good stuff here. Now, just to say that today's session is sponsored by Robopack. Uh, they do amazing software packaging, but a little more on them uh, later on. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we would love to have you on board. So make sure that you bump that subscribe button, uh, ring that bell, and uh, make sure that you've got questions and comments. As always, get them uh, down below. And if you'd like more, why not consider signing up to my Patreon site? Here you'll get access to full Microsoft courses, uh, monthly Zoom calls, and a heck of a lot more. So without any further ado, I think it's about time we jump in and have a look at some of these tips and tricks. Hmm, I wonder how many you know. Okay, so firstly, I'm going to pop down here into the Entra Admin Center. I'm going to come into Identity and I'm going to go into All Users. I'm just going to pick a user at random. And in this case, I'm going to open up Adele's account. Now here in Adele's account, I want to edit her properties. So in properties here, you'll find all the information that you'll need about jobs. Um, by the way, if you're connected to uh, apps like Workday, uh, all of that information will come through, by the way. So in here, we've got contact information and a couple of really interesting fields. Now, first up here, you'll see that Adele's manager um, is Miriam. Now, Miriam here, uh, you probably wonder what the manager role is. Well, first of all, you can have one manager. That's all you can have. And what this does is it manages and controls the structure of your organization. So for example, if I come into Microsoft Teams here, you can see I'm here on a Teams, uh, a Microsoft team, the Mark 8 project team, and I've got Megan here. And if I just float my mouse pointer over Megan, her information card pops up. And here in her information card, you can see I've got the organization option. And sure enough, if I click onto this, you can see it now gives me a complete kind of overview of the structure of our organization. Isn't that cool? Now, one other thing, what Andy, what would happen if I didn't want that? And in fact, could I control that? And the answer, of course, is yes. And of course, the answer is simply yes. To do this, simply come into Microsoft Teams Admin Center, Settings and Policies, and if you focus in here onto the Teams tab, and here in Teams, if you scroll down to the Organization section, and this is it, Show the Organization tab for Users. So if you don't want that to be seen, you can switch that off for additional privacy. A great feature, and that is the purpose of the Manager tab. Now, the recently uh, added option here is the sponsors as well. Now, if you want to invite guests, some organizations require a sponsor. And to do this, you can simply add up to five different sponsors. Um, and again, you might do this for you know, you might have a policy within the organization uh, that requires this. So again, really, really useful. Now, just while we're here, you'll also notice in the user properties that we have this. How often have you missed this? The employee hire date. So I can simply come into Adele's account here and I can say, hey, we're here in 2025. I'll say, okay, March, let's say uh, Adele is going to start with us on the 2nd of March, 
2025. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and I'll save that. What's the benefit of that? Well, you can do a number of things with this. First of all, I can go into groups here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, pop into my groups and I'm gonna come into all groups. So here in all groups, we have something called time-based dynamic groups. And if you've never seen this, it's absolutely awesome. So I'm simply gonna come into here and we're gonna create a new Microsoft 365. It can either be a security group or it can be a 365 uh, group, of course, which you can then potentially promote to become a team. Okay, so let's give the group a name. I'm gonna just gonna call this the New York Sales Team. And again, I'm basing it on dynamic user. Now, it's a good practice to put in a owner here. So I'm going to just come in and I'm just going to put myself as the owner uh, of this group. And just to say, uh, I'm also going to use dynamic membership. And this is where you can have dynamic membership based on a date or a time. So check this out. I'm simply going to come in. I'm going to choose a property. I'm going to say city. And I'm going to say equals and I'm going to say New York and I'm going to then add a second expression I'm going to choose department and I'm going to say if department equals IT support um, I want obviously anybody who's in New York and uh, in the department IT support I want them to be a member of this group. However, I don't want them to be a member until a specific date, get the idea. So now I can add in another expression. And if I scroll right down, you'll notice that in here, we have a, a new field called employee hire date. Now, if you're using tools like Workday or some other HR based tool, then this can be absolutely fantastic. Now, when we choose the operator here, we have two options. So it can either be greater than or equal to a specific date. So if it's more than the 2nd of March, 2025, fine. Or if it's less than, so they can only be a member up to that date, you understand? So that's where it's really cool. So for me, I'm gonna say greater than or equal to I'll say 2025 and I'm going to say March and I'm going to say the 2nd of March. And if you put in the T, I can even put in the time here as well. So I can say from nine o'clock. And as you can now see, this has now greater than or equal to. Uh, and you can see it's put in the time and it's also put in the date. So there you have it a dynamic based group that's based on time. So how do we manage that then with the user? Well, I'm just gonna pop back into a user account and I'm gonna come back into Adele's account. And if I come back here and edit her properties, you can see that I can put in the job information and I've got that 2nd of March, 2025. Um, I can then come into the uh, department and I can say, hey, I want Adele to be in IT support. Uh, where is Adele based? Of course, you can put the location uh, specifically, though we're looking at the contact, uh, contact information here. So again, I can say New York. So there you have it. Um, I now save that. So on the 2nd of March, Adele will now become a member of that group. Today's video is sponsored by Robopack, the trend-setting solution for Intune packaging and third-party patch management, and it's free for SMBs and NGOs. Visit them today at robopack.com. So one group of settings that can cause quite a bit of confusion are devices. So if I come into, I've got devices here, I've got my uh, overview of all my devices down here, but then you might say, well, I understand that, Andy, but what's that and things like mobility? Uh, what does that mean? Well, um, all devices here, this is your MDM or mobile device management. Now, 
uh, all user accounts in Microsoft 365 have access to this. So uh, with these devices, we have some device settings. And with the device settings, it's really about the machine or the user's identity. And the benefit here is single sign-on. Generally, it doesn't allow for the management of a device, you understand? For that, you need to have an Intune license. But there are limited things that you can do. For example, uh, users can come on. You can say, I'm going to allow all users to join their devices for the purpose of single sign-on. So in other words, when you sign in, you sign in with your Entra ID account or Microsoft 365 account, and you will then have single sign-on to all things Microsoft. Now, the, uh, the difference for that, the difference between that is join and register. Register means that you can register a, a mobile device. Uh, generally, it's not managed. It's just kind of registered. Um, and if you want to kind of enforce that, the benefit of that would be, let's say, for example, with conditional access. So there are some limited settings that you can do with conditional access. Again, these settings don't really work well with hybrid devices because Active Directory is the source of authority for the physical device. Now, if you want to actually physically manage the device, you will need to have a mobility service in place. And for example, here we have Microsoft Intune. So you can see I want to allow all my users to be managed in Intune. All you would need to do then is assign your users an E5 license or a business premium or Intune license. And then you would be able to manage that. Please note, however, for uh, MAM or mobile application management, you can still deploy apps to unmanaged devices or even guest devices. And I actually showed you how you could do that in last week's video. Now, if you wanted to manage those apps, you can simply come into the 365 Admin Center. If you go into all admin centers, and here in the admin centers, you can see we have the Office Configuration Tools. And this is a whole bunch of tools that manages the deployment or the configuration, I should say, of Microsoft cloud-based apps. And this is where you can do that. For more reference on that, check out last week's video. So finally, back here in the admin center, I'm gonna come into conditional access. And conditional access can be found on the protection tab, by the way. Now, I've gone over conditional access many times, but there are just a couple of little important settings that will definitely need your attention. So I'm simply just going to create a new policy here. I'll call this my, uh, I'll call it my admin policy or my demo admin policy. How about that? So I can come in here and I'm going to say for which users is this for? Now, for the purpose of the demo, um, you should never apply all users because you could potentially lock yourself out. You can do specific groups or in this case, you would actually do specific admin roles. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to set this for one user. Okay, now I've got a user here, Bianca, and I'm going to just create a demo setting just for Bianca. And it's a great idea, by the way, that if you're doing conditional access, try on a single account first, then add more users in, and it, you'll avoid making mistakes here. Now, in terms of target resources, um, what resources, this used to be called cloud apps, of course. Um, do you want it to do all cloud apps or all resources? or a specific resource. Well, the reason why I say a specific resource is if I come down to the controls, you'll notice here that we had a recent security feature that was added a few months back, and it's called require token protection for sign-ins. But you'll notice that it's actually grayed out. And the reason for that is because it doesn't work on all resources 
only specific resources. So for example, I'm going to click on select here and I'm going to choose um, an important setting, which could be, for example, an admin portal. So you can set this for an admin portal or Microsoft 365 or something like that. And what token protection does, it essentially protects you. And you'll notice that if I now click onto this, you'll now notice that it's available. So essentially this prevents token replay attack. Now, while we're here, another uh, a number of important settings here, by the way, um, of course, you can grant access, you can base it on multi-factor authentication, of course, which you would do anyway. You can even have your own authentication strength. So, for example, I only want, uh, for example, um, uh, pass, pass keys. I want to use pass keys um, and that's fine. Um, if I come into conditions here, we have a number of new conditions. Now, just recently, um, you'll notice that identity protection, the settings have now moved into conditional access. But you can see they've also nicely explained things. So it's actually telling you, which I always felt was missing, what user risk and what sign in risk actually is. Now, if you're using Microsoft Purview, you can also uh, address uh, potential threats like insider risks as well. And you can see that we've also got conditional access for that. Um, I'm going to just scroll down here. We've also got another recent addition in here. This is called authentication flows. And uh, you can enable these um, transfer methods. Now, you have two options, device code flow. Now, this is particularly for, for example, shared devices. So, for example, devices where, for example, they're in a library or in a factory or something like that. Now, the problem with this device code flow is it potentially could... Um, you could have issues with phishing. So in other words, if you manage to fish one device, you potentially could fish all. So, and again, you might want to create a policy that blocks access to that. Another one is authentication transfer. This can be really useful, especially if you've got users with multiple devices, which let's face it, we all do. So it means that you can, for example, uh, go into Microsoft Outlook Online, and if you're prompted for a QR code, you could use your browser uh, on your phone or your camera on your phone, authenticate on your phone, which would then pass that through to the appropriate device and transfer the authentication. So those are just a few recent add-ons that I think are really useful in conditional access. So there you have it. Entra ID, AKA Azure Active Directory, whatever you want to call it. A uh, big bag of tips and tricks. Hey, listen, I really hope you enjoyed it and you found that useful. If you did, bump the like button, give me a big thumbs up. It does make a difference to the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, you know what to do. Come and join me, support me. I really do appreciate it. Questions and comments, as always, get those down below. I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.